Good morning, folks. We've got minor space weather activity, key updates on our core topics of coverage, and an update on Earth's rotation speed. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were full of small pops and motions. No larger solar flares, but there were a couple of releases, most notably the plasma filament that arched up and erupted right next to the northern sunspot group. NASA's Enlil Spiral has that event heading our way. It's very small, but it should hit with the next coronal hole stream. Those streams should be arriving in 36 to 48 hours and will provide a few days of that coronal hole enhancement and enhanced geomagnetic activity. First up in the articles today, little jab at CMIP models. The Darling climate runs pretty much fail when it comes to rain patterns, a critical item they'll need to resolve. And yet, below where I have highlighted, when they fully resolve the stratosphere, it doesn't help their models at all. Maybe they should try fully resolving solar forcing. And speaking of that, the coupling between space weather impacts and the ionosphere through the plasma sphere is grinding forward. And at those upper layers, which you hopefully recall, were the focus of part one of Sun Controls Climate, the most recent item in our climate video playlist. And boy, it would have been nice to have this one come out before I made that video, wouldn't it? We've gone over how even the neutral mass is affected in the upper atmosphere during geomagnetic activity, and this one specifically looks at the IMF as well, the current sheet crossings, the space weather item that plays in catastrophism as well. Hopefully, we recall that story a few weeks ago about solar EMP with no warning. Instead of the CME impact causing electrical disruptions, if the flare is big enough, the excitement can be instant and we get a better idea of how this works studying modern flare effects on the ionosphere. Conductivity enhancements are the key in that situation, and the neutrals are left alone in that circumstance. This is kind of cool up next, the first ever measurement of space weather ground effects on another planet. The same InSight lander telling us that Mars seismic activity is running out of control also has a magnetometer. It got worked pretty well by a minor CME impact at the red planet, the surface level impacts of space weather, by the way, are something modern climate scientists pretend doesn't exist. Now last but not least, when we peeked in on Earth's rotation speed three weeks ago, we saw that we were guaranteed to have the fastest year on record. Now, they've gone ahead and begun to predict the 2022 year as well. 2021 right below it, even slightly faster marks than what we showed three weeks ago. And folks, while it appears their initial prediction for 2022 is only a tiny nudge faster, that's how every year's prediction starts. We watch them take it from a nudge to rapid speed up throughout this year, and in addition to expecting that in 2022, their predicted fastest day within 2022 would be by far the fastest day in recorded history. The days continue to grow shorter as our rotation speed is increasing. We greatly appreciate your support. About 40% of you skipped class yesterday. That's interesting couple things you don't want to miss in yesterday's show. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.